Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Rusty Beauties and the 1966 GT6 project here. In the last episode, we completed the rear valance. We deleted this seam here. You know how this valance is one piece that goes in and that's another piece and they meet here and both panels have flanges that go in and they are spot welded there. So we cut it here and here and we replaced this with one piece and now inside that's what it looks like there's no um there's no seam here anymore because this seam is what creates lots of troubles there because water goes in and stays there and it rots from inside out so we deleted that and this area of the car is completed which was the last major repair i believe what's left now is um to clean the wheel wells maybe and see what happens inside because uh, i know about this repair that we left from a long time ago here for when the car is on its side in this position because now you see we have much better access here and i can see here that something else is going on which we're gonna have to review here and see if we can fix that So as a beginning, let's take the needle scaler and buzz this and see what we're going to review. I can't figure out what this is here. Obviously there's rusted spots, but uh, is that body filler? It looks like concrete to me. <laughs> but anyways, looks like we're gonna have to cut a big piece from here and replace it. And inside though, there's a bracket that holds the shelf, I guess. So probably that's gonna fall off, but uh, we're gonna have to put it back. Of course, before we cut it, we're gonna take some measurements so we can put it in the same place. But before that, I'm just gonna go around the whole wheel well and make sure that we don't have any other surprises under the undercoating or whatever that is. That looks like they sprayed first and then they painted the car red. Looks like it was white before, or is this a primer? I don't know. All right, so it is stripped completely from whatever mud they put there and here it looks like this is like jb weld or something <laughs> it's like really solid doesn't want to come out it's not body filler it's something much harder than that and i guess it's jb weld because i found some more of it right here <laughs> you see so here there was a hole a long time ago because this thing was under the undercoating so i guess it was there from a long time ago and they covered it with jb weld or whatever that is that i can't remove and then they put the undercoating and painted red so i'm not even gonna attempt removing it anymore because it looks like we're gonna have to cut a piece from here so so we're just gonna cut everything off so it looks like the valance wasn't the last major repair these are also pretty major here these two we have to do the same in the other wheel well because I'm assuming that we're gonna find something similar there too. And now we can make this patch for here, but before that, I'm gonna use the opportunity that I have a hole here, and now I can actually reach inside here, even though I have this uh, 
inner fender here, but still there are holes on it. And I can put a dolly inside and I can fix this one a little bit because even though it is better than the other side, it's still low here in some areas. So let me see if I can plunge it a little bit with the slapper. Let's get some slapper locking. Actually comes out, and as it comes out, now I have to grind the weld because the weld becomes too high. Before I didn't grind it because it was below the line, so I didn't care much. But now I'm gonna have to grind it, and that's gonna allow me to bring the metal even higher. Wow, that's nice. So there was a use of this hole, anyways. <laughs> Somebody was asking if uh, Rusty has a rug in the garage or a pad that he can lay on. Well, do you think he's comfortable there? <laughs> he's like the royal dog. Anyway, so, um, so here we cut this piece, as you know. I cleaned up a little bit around, cleaned inside. I cleaned and primer this inside here. And I made also this piece that we're gonna have to bend now so it's gonna go this way we're gonna have to stretch the flange so we can give it the same curve as there and then somehow we're gonna have to put it inside and mark it on the outside so we're gonna see how this is gonna happen can't work very well from inside I don't see what I'm doing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten the flange only just the flange to the correct length here so I can put the piece on this side and compare this curve with this curve I believe that's how you're gonna see better so I cut the flange let's see if it is gonna fit oh yeah we need to curve it more Now let's mark it, I don't know how, but I need to keep it here and go on the other side and mark it. I was thinking to put it inside and mark it from outside, but also it works also this way because I need to cut it maybe if not precisely, but at least closer to the shape so I can push it in more. I can reach like this. cut it a little bit bigger but you see how much more I have here so I'm, I'm gonna cut outside of the line okay hmm. okay the curve is pretty good now here at the top the bottom though we need to curve more and we also need to curve it a little bit this way we can do that on the English wheel because you see this we did on the stretcher but here this didn't follow much so it's much straighter than here we can do that by hand if we want to but we also need a little bit this way very little so we can do that on the english wheel because this needs to be stretched all right so here on the english wheel we have this die which is very very slight crown like almost straight but believe me it has a crown and we said that as it is sitting like this we want more here and less here so we're gonna put it this way because when the English wheel stretches it the center it's gonna curve it this way and a little bit this way so it's gonna do on both sides what we want okay so that's the area where we want more so we're gonna go only here first And then we're gonna go from one end to the other. Okay, it's curving a little. 
and it's also curving this way, you see? So we said this one we want more. So keep going here a little bit more. But I think we're pretty good now. Let's go test it. Okay, needs a lot more in both ends. Tested it one more time and this is the only area here that is still not laying properly so we're gonna focus here. Okay, this is what it looks like. Like this here needs to be pushed more but you know what i think i'm gonna start welding it and i'm gonna shape it as i'm going yeah i think that's gonna be pretty good once we cut it here so it can go in all right so let me see if i can mark it now from inside and cut it to the correct shape This is its final shape. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna drill holes here for plug welds that we're gonna have to do from inside later to this piece. And we're gonna paint the flange because we're not gonna have access to it later. And uh, this side we can leave to paint from inside. Okay. All right, so what happened here, I welded the two sides first, here and here, and then when I started welding here in the middle, turned out that I had way too much material at the bottom and not enough on this piece. Obviously, we were supposed to stretch it a little bit more, but we didn't. So what I did is I cut all the tacks that I've made so far, except the two top ones that are holding the piece up there, and I started from the center. So I aligned the top piece and the bottom piece here. I started from the center. And that difference between the length of this and this, I guess, spread and it came to the two sides. So when I was lining it, lining it up here and then here and here and here, coming closer, this piece, because it's shorter, this gap opened a little bit and this one opened. Even though I don't see much difference, but I don't know, it happened. So anyways, we fixed that, so now I'm gonna start tacking it very slowly again, like in the previous videos we were doing. We're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six tacks maybe, and then let it cool down. And in the meantime, we're gonna start working here on this patch, which I already marked, where I think I'm gonna cut. So as you can see here, the problem, the main problems are here, 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 and here. This hasn't gone through yet, but it's gonna go through soon, so we, we better change it now. So I cut this piece and I bent it more or less how it is gonna be. And now we're gonna mark these two lines and we're gonna run it on the bead roller. Hopefully we're gonna match these lines well. And if we don't, we're gonna have to flatten it and start again because these two lines need to match perfectly here because if it's one line, we can always move the piece back and forth and adjust it. But two lines, we have to match them both, so it's gonna be trickier than normal. But we're gonna try. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be working here and here at the same time. All right, this is my test piece from uh, when we were working with my son on his Miata, like uh, a few days ago. And that's how the bead roller is set up right now and when I look at it it's pretty close to this curve here like that's the one we're repairing but this one is easier to see so I think we're gonna use the same setup and it's gonna be close enough these are the wheels that I'm using again these are not cutting wheels anymore because I rounded 
the top one. I need to round the bottom one as well, but uh, for now it is how it is. So the way it is set up, this flange on the left is the one that pushes down. So like this, so the left one needs to run right here. I need to mark the line, which is gonna be made by this edge here. So I need this line here at the bottom. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, but that's how I marked it. You see where I put the marks? Matching this line, the, the, the low one, like this line right here. Anyways, I hope what I'm saying makes sense. So to make it clear, this is the flat part. Between the two lines, it needs to be totally flat. And then from this line, it needs to go up and then that way. And here the same from the line, it needs to go up and then that way. So that's why this line is gonna be right at this edge here. Except it doesn't work this way. That's interesting. So we need to be a little bit farther than the line. Okay, so we need to actually overlap the line. I don't know why. Okay, I'm gonna flatten it. All right, so we're gonna leave the line under the wheel, in the center of the wheel then. And I'm pushing this up. <laughs> okay, more or less there. I'm gonna run it one more time. Okay. And let's do this one as well. This one is gonna be more tricky. Okay, this, I didn't expect this actually. Uh, I mean, I didn't think it through. This one from here to here, it's pretty much straight line, but here we have like significant curve. I was expecting that when my piece was bent here a little bit. The, the, this was gonna follow the curve, but actually doesn't work this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten this. Now, again, it's easy. And then we're gonna go and run the English wheel here to stretch. And then, we, and then when we run the bead roller, there's not gonna be another option for the piece, but to go curved, I hope. started taking the shape. Okay, that's not too bad actually. I think now we're following a little bit the curve. So let's go on the bead roller again. We see the line, it's still there, so we're gonna use the same line. Let's see. Wow. It almost straightened it. <laughs> there's still, there's still curve, but, hmm, might work though. So let's see. Hmm. I think I found finally a position for you that I can put you in on the tripod and stay there. Okay. Well, let me bend this corner. I think I'm just got it. Hmm. Oh, that looks better actually. Okay, so now what's happening is I think here we have this curve, which is nice, but here we can push down because this is what keeps it up, the piece. So I think this whole area we need to stretch as well so it can go down and uh, including the edge. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly, 
but that's my feeling. So I'm gonna go on the English wheel again and stretch it here. Now it is like a dome here because we stretched, probably I shouldn't have stretched so far here. I should have stayed only here. But since now we have a dome here, of course, now when it sits like that, it sits on the dome. So if you have a dome, we need to stretch also the ends of the dome and that's going to bring it down. I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense to me. So maybe I'm wrong, but I'll try. So I'm just going to do the edges here. <coughs> Okay, <laughs> that looks pretty good here, but now this end is up, so we need to <coughs> bend it in. Wow, I think we are getting close. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> okay, well now i think we have to cut it and go from there because now it's sitting on too many spots here there's too much stuff underneath that is not allowing us to go flush with the other surface so let's cut it and So the only reason we cut this was so we can take out the rusty metal from here and keep this bracket and then we're gonna weld it back. It's not like it is two seconds, but it's, it's gonna save us a lot of time because if we have to do that through the wheel well, it's gonna take us forever. On the vice, it's gonna be much easier. All right, let's see how this is gonna fit now. Wow. Actually, it looks really good. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the paint from here around and inside as much as I can. And then we're gonna start welding it and pushing it up and down to line it up and that's it. All right, I think we're ready to start welding it. It's not perfect, but uh, I think it looks good enough for what it is. Dip inside the wheel well. So, okay, I don't think we're gonna have, there's gonna be room enough for you and for me to work together here. So I'm gonna start on my own and I'm gonna just give you updates every once in a while. So I'll see you soon. All right, I think it lined up good everywhere. It's tucked everywhere. This gap is a little bit bigger than what I wanted it to be in this one, but I'm filling it up with weld, not a problem just needs to be slow you know but the thing is as I'm welding here slow I'm also welding here slow and this this one is already done so I'm gonna start now grinding this one and again every four five six minutes coming here doing a little bit of work then coming back here to grind and then I'm gonna go there and start removing this piece of sheet metal from here and then going back and welding again we're always doing two jobs at a time you know that's how it's in life also yeah you need you always need to have two options like when it's this time of the month with your i didn't say that next day tin 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 yeah it took me all night to finish welding and grinding here <laughs> just kidding well it wasn't easy to be honest this was pretty much okay to grind but this one <laughs> I'm telling you, with all these curves here, it was pain in the butt. But anyways, it's done now. It's not invisible seam, but it is 
more than okay for what it is here, for where it is. So we're done with that and we're gonna leave it alone for now and we're gonna come on this side, I guess now, and it's time to start dealing with this shelf that we removed from here. We need to put something back there to support the, I don't know what they're called, cards or whatever that cover the gas tank and the spare tire. Oh, my light is still here. I have this inside to shine light so I could see the pinholes and weld them. Wow, look at this. <laughs> Anyways, let me reorganize here a little bit and I'll bring you back. All right, so what we have to do here is, you see, the end of the bar that was here is still here. And here we have the notch that it used to go through all the way down there to the other side. So <clears throat> this bracket as well was welded to this one. So this is the piece and I actually, I snapped the spot welds just by pulling the piece out. So anyways, this is how this was like this. And this bracket was welded to it under there. So that's how we're gonna weld it again to a new bar that we're gonna make. And the other important thing is this bracket here that holds the shelf and this bracket here that holds the shelf and you can see how it was matching this notch there but we're gonna make something that's a little bit more solid for here so it doesn't bend back and forward and that's what i mean this is a bar that i bought yesterday uh, a bar i mean an angle iron or whatever it's called so we're gonna cut this to length, we're gonna put it there. Maybe we need to bend it a little bit. Let's see. Uh, not really, it's pretty much a straight line, so we don't even need to bend it. We're just gonna weld it in place. We're gonna break these brackets off from here and we're gonna weld them to it. Then we have to weld these brackets here, right? Remember, we still have them here, this one, these two. But for that, we're going to flip the car on its other side because it's going to be easier. And we're going to also inspect this wheel well on the outside because probably we have similar issues here. And yes, I'm forgetting this, yeah? <laughs> forgetting about this. We have to do that as well. So we're going to put it here with this and we're going to take care of it. All right, so I cut the brackets from this piece and I measured exactly where they were. And then I welded them here. So one is here, one is up there, they're plug welded. And um, here, this bracket is also welded in place. So this part is ready. And I think for this side, I'm gonna flip the car around. It's easier to work when it's up there. And it's gonna be also easier for this, to extend this bracket and weld it here, to do those plug welds over there. And yeah, let's flip the car around. Whoops, we have a flat tire. <laughs> Why are you not telling me, guys? I forgot to put the wing on. <laughs> and nobody tells me anything. Oh my God. You would think that after so many times flipping it around and vacuuming it every time, stuff is gonna stop falling around. Believe me, every time I flip it around, there's more stuff going left and right in it. Anyways, so now you can see in this position, it's so much easier to build this back to where it was, weld that bracket there and do the same job that we've done here over there. All right everything is done now so i welded this piece here and i painted primered everything i also did those brackets here i put them in the same place where they used to be you see now oh my god bolts and stuff 
you see I need to vacuum again <laughs> anyway so put these brackets here as they were there made this other bar up there welded this where it belongs welded this and um, and I even came here and I cleaned this wheel well and luckily we don't have any troubles here we don't have troubles like on the other side we have a little bit of surface rust here and there but it's nothing major nothing that needs repairs yeah made some dust again anyways i think that's where we're gonna leave it for now we're gonna go with the video here keep saying it but i think this is the last of the major repairs because now the only place that we haven't inspected yet is the bottom of the car so we need to clean it up with the needle scaler and that's when we're gonna see if there's any more repairs that need to be done but i believe we are pretty good here we don't need anything unless something appears here but no that's all mud and stuff other than that everything else i believe is repaired yay <laughs> so anyways we're gonna see how we're gonna proceed with this car because uh what we discussed with the owner many months ago was that I was going to do the metal work and that's what I've done. <laughs> so he's coming tomorrow and we're going to talk and we're going to see how we're going to proceed from here. There's a strong possibility that he's going to take over from here in his old shop, which is uh, going to be good for me as well because I have this baby over there waiting for that long. Like people keep asking me about this girl so I think that the chances to start working on her again are pretty high now. Anyways, let's see what we're gonna decide tomorrow and we're gonna go from there. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and subscribing. Thanks for hanging with me in the garage, working, keeping me company and uh, for supporting the channel. Just a reminder that there's a Facebook group called Rusty Beauties where there's uh, a little bit over 1800 members now in this moment who share their projects show what they do they help each other they sell each other parts they just support each other which is a great it's like a little community called rusty beauties so if you're interested go to facebook go to groups search for rusty beauties and you're gonna find it there if you want to support the channel you can do that by just sharing that's a great support but if you want to do more than that, you can support it financially as well. There are some links in the description of this video to my Patreon page, to my PayPal. So you can choose one of these ways to support the channel. But that's not going to buy you anything. That just gives you the opportunity to say thank you, Elin, if you feel like it. I mean, I don't want to take away anything from the people who can't afford supporting the channel. So that's why I keep everything free and I give the chance to some people who choose to support me financially anyways i'm rambling guys so uh thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye